I have a question. Yes. What is the bigger picture purpose of why we're doing this over and over and over and over again? For what end? Um, look, supposedly you're here doing this over and over and over again for the purpose of building an inner life that is strong enough and developed enough that it'll give you a connection with God and higher energy in the universe. Without that kind of an inner life, you know, the only thing we're connected to is, you know, mind, tension, motions, energy that's crazy in the world. So that's what this is about. That's the bigger picture. And if that commitment isn't, isn't inside you, uh, then I'm not quite clear what you're doing here. You understand? Because this is very hard work. Well, it is. The commitment is here for me. I'm just curious, like, why the bigger picture? Like, OK, so I get to enlightenment, then what? Why are we do? Why do we have to do this? Why can't we just exist? Well, you know, that's what enlightenment is, just existing. But human beings, you understand, they exist with minds that are, you know, I mean, just with a lot of tension and security problems that need to be transformed inside so that we can exist. The purpose of this meditation is to truly build an inner life that allows you to be. I mean, you know, the whole class today, all I heard from Rudy is at this point of your life, Stuart, you have to be nothing. Now that might sound like a scary proposition to most of you, but to me it's not because that state of inner nothingness allows all of God's energy to flow through and allows me to be. It allows me to not be something, not to be anything, just to be a child of God. Now, will the mind ever understand these things? I don't think so, because we're trained from the earliest periods of our life to conceptualize everything. Please try and sit still. Which we're trained from the earliest periods of life to conceptualize. What are we going to become? What will we be? What will we you understand? And uh, you make yourself crazy trying to figure that out instead of just being. Living completely and fully in the moment. Mastering the mind, mastering the emotions, mastering your inner life, connecting with spirit and living your life in the moment, in the now. And once you begin to live your life in the now, there is no future, there's no past, there's just the now, just being completely and totally alive and totally one with higher energy. And in order to attain this, we go through stages of life, having to work out karma, having to, you know, learn how to truly love unconditionally is what I talked about yesterday. You know, unconditional love enables us to live in the now. But this is not a concept, it is an, a state of being. And a state of being can only come around, about for us if we grow into it and we develop a system that allows us to live that way. It takes training. I keep telling everyone that. It takes time, it takes patience, it takes, you know, transformation of one's entire inner life and you need training to do that i mean if you want to be a lawyer for god's sake you need to get training a doctor a plumber an electrician you need training you have to learn how to do these things 
dealing with the inner life of a human being is the single most difficult thing we have to deal with on this planet, our own inner life. And we need to learn how to do it. So we need to have these have classes have the, and get that training. And it's not conceptualized training. It's not a training that you get. You know, it's from the interior out. It's not from the exterior in. And the whole end game of all of this, I hate to say it, it's just to be nothing, to be, be one with God, to be living totally in the moment, to being a vehicle through which spiritual energy flows. And that energy will never flow through us if we're conceptualizing life, if we're in our heads thinking and logically trying to figure out what is going on in the world, it won't. We just have to be. It's that simple. No, I don't force anybody to come to these classes, but I just assume, and maybe I shouldn't assume that, that you're all here to learn how to do this. <laughs> I mean, I, I would think that that would be at the essence of what people want to learn, how to truly become a child of God, how to live one's life in the moment, how to be. And the only person on this planet that we are truly up against to learn how to do this is ourselves. It's the only person that keeps us from doing this. I mean, yeah, people have all their stuff and this and tensions and projections, but none of that really matters. What matters is have we developed an inner life that enables us to live that way, to be in the moment. And that is exclusively what these classes are about and why the repetition of them is so essential. Because, you know, we're like a bunch of Pavlovian dogs in a way. We have to condition ourselves to be able to live in certain ways. We have been so conditioned to live conceptually because that's what we're taught from the moment we're born by the society, by our parents, by teachers, schools, universities. And there's nothing wrong with that. You understand? It's not a negative thing, conceptualizing and having success in life and building, having goals. And, but, you know, the problem is that takes over. And we don't realize that that conceptualization is only a tiny part of the whole. And the whole is learning to live in the now. You know, I once I talked about this, but you know, I wrote a book once called, you know, originally it was called The Duchies. Now it's called Three Rivers. I never published it. It's almost a 400 page novel. And it, the first section of it is about a young kid, 12 years old. And, you know, it's a coming of age story. And his parents are making him crazy. With, you know, you got to worry about what you're going to be when you're 30 and 40 and 20, and you got to do this and that and the other. And he has this kind of uh, atypical Uncle George who lives in the household. He tells his parents, let him be a successful 12 year old. If he's a successful 12 year old, I guarantee he'll be a successful 30 year old. Let him truly find himself in the now on the age that he's living and let him build on that and he will be successful. 
And this is what the meditation is about, is building a system that enables us to do it. It's not just, I keep coming and coming and coming, like you described it, you know? And well, I was, more, I was more meaning my life. I, I love coming to these classes. I mean, why do I have to keep doing life? <laughs> dying, reborn, dying, reborn. Well, that's not necessary. If you learn how to live in the now, you finally get free of dying and being reborn and dying and being reborn by learning to live your life in the moment. Becoming a child of God, totally, you know, embracing the moment and letting it be the totality of your life. Because that will encompass the past, the present, and the future. And that's something, honestly, if you try to understand it, you'll make yourself crazy. You have to just evolve into it and live that way. I mean, it's like all these books they've written, you know? Be here now, the power of now, you know, Ram Das, and I forgot the other guy's name. Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle, whatever his name is. But that, you know, I mean, th this is what they're talking about, exactly what I've been talking about here. The only problem is, you know, in Ram Das, they don't tell you how to do it, they just tell you about it. And the, the miracle of Rudy's work is there's a way to do it. There's a way to train yourself and build that kind of inner life. Hmm. Hmm. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome, Rachel. Just keep working on yourself. You're doing very well. Don't get into your head about it. Does anyone else have a question they'd like to ask? I mean, through this whole class, all I heard from Rudy and Nichananda, Stuart, Trump trying to be like you were when you were 40 years old, with all your ambitions in the world and your work and your building ashrams and businesses. And so, you know, it's a period of your life now where you have to literally become nothing. The hardest job in the world is to become nothing, to be simply a vehicle through which God's energy can flow. And I'm grateful because that teaching that I got has taken such a burden off of me. I mean, I like, I like to pass on what I've done and younger people can build situations and have that kind of vision and, you know. So bless Rudy and Nichananda. I embrace them both and kiss their feet and so grateful for the life they've given me and what has transpired in this life. And, you know. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have a question? I have a question, Stuart. This is Melissa. This is Melissa. What, um, functionally, like, what do you do when you're so buried in your own resistance and tension that you can't even find gratitude? Well, I, I, I mean, that's a very hard way to live. <laughs> 
I mean, you have to be grateful for the food you eat, the life you have, your, you understand you can't allow your tensions to interfere with all the incredible gifts. I mean, you know, you know, next, you know, I think in two weeks you're coming here, you know, to get in-person training here, you know, you're making such a sincere effort to grow in your life. And I have nothing but respect for it. And I have deep gratitude that you're willing to make that kind of effort to learn the things that I have to teach. Now you have to look at yourself and say, I am worthy of learning these things. I am worthy of being a happy person. I can't spend my life just beating myself up every day. You know, and that's part of also, it gets back to the training that one gets in this meditation that we practice. You get to a place where you simply, I am worthy of all the gifts that life offers me. And I can't allow those things to get trampled by tension, by insecurity, by me having this kind of relationship with myself where most of my life I've been beating myself up. It has to change. And the meditation practice that you're doing is going to help change that. And as that changes, suddenly there's that, I mean, gratitude, love, self-worth. And one can enjoy the wonderment of life. And you never know when it ends, but, you know, I mean, it's, And I get back to what I told Rachel, it's all about learning to live in the now and not spending the now truly just every day beating yourself up and, you know, having this turmoil inside yourself. That I'm not worthy. I'm not this. I can't feel gratitude. I have nothing to be grateful for. I mean, Melissa, you have a lot to be grateful for. You have a, you know, a lot of very raw energy in you. You have a lot of need to have a spiritual life. It's a great gift. And I shouldn't have to be sitting here trying to convince you to be grateful. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't really want you to do that. I was more curious of like, working with it in the practice specifically, like how do you actually work that in the, the well, practice when that comes up? The easiest way is just open your heart. How do you open your heart? The quickest way is just being grateful. Be grateful for your dogs. Be grateful for your, the food you eat. Be grateful for the job that you do and the people you help in your job, you know? That's an incredible beginning. And get big enough in yourself to be able to do it. And be grounded enough, have enough foundation inside to be able to do that. Now, I know from what I went through in my own life, how difficult it is to make that transition. Because when I met Rudy, I was pretty screwed up. In fact, I was a complete mess. He once told me, I'll never take another student like you. <laughs> once he told me a lot of times, I'll never take another student like you. I was pretty messed up. I had to make the transition. And when I finally began to make that transition, he came up to me and he gave me a big hug and he said, Stuart, you know, you know, you're really learning what I have to teach. But I had to work my ass off to make that transition. To get that kind of security in myself 
And that security kept me from really beating myself up every day. Being depressed, being unhappy, being, you know. So it's in it's both inside oneself and it manifests in the world. And when you make that transition, and you finally have that internal security, people see it. People really see it. To be honest, when I was younger and I first, I don't think anyone in this class would have come within 50 yards of me. <laughs> it's the kind of tension that I had in myself and deep insecurity. And thank God for Rudy, because he saw the potential and he was able to do something to help me. And he had the patience truly had patience to let that, you know, power manifest inside. God bless him. Does anyone else have a question that we'd like to ask? So just to finish, the addendum is, I'm not talking from having read about all this in a book. I'm talking because I have been through it. All of the things you asked Raquel and, you know, you asked all this, I have been through it. And I know exactly what that's about. And I know the kind of work a person has to do on, on, on themselves to get to the other side of it. You know, it's a long journey, but my God, it's really something possible to do. Does anyone else have a question? They would like to ask. Okay. If there are no more questions, then uh, there'll be a class on Wednesday. And uh, I hope to see you all and God bless you all for being here and, you know, for really sharing in this work and helping me to make my life possible. So bless you all and thank you. And I'll see everybody on Wednesday. Thank you, thank you very Thanks, much. Stuart. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.